Hello and welcome to Dora Kitty. Today we're going to fly. Actually, I've already flown this route, but you know what I mean. From Phuket Air Park, which is the general aviation airport in Phuket, and fly over to Phuket Airport, which is the actual Phuket Airport HKT or VTSP, which you'll be flying to if you're flying to Phuket on a commercial airline. So Phuket Airport is actually. A little bit hard to find on flight gear map, but you can search for the words Phuket Air Park and it will pop up. It's fair, promise. So the basic trajectory I'm going to take is that from Phuket Air Park, we're going to take off towards the sea. You actually can't take off towards the mountain because if you try to take off or land towards on the side towards the mountain, you will just control flight into terrain first thing. It's not good. <laughs> okay, so you take off towards the ocean. And then you take a left turn, and then you fly past this whole mountain. This thing is actually a mountain without many cities to it. We're going to fly over to this point, which is a really convenient target for Phuket. This is this is roughly where your aim point is going to be for a lot of the things, including pattern flights. So we're going to hit here, and we're going to turn towards the runway, and we're going to land on this side. So if you want to actually do it properly and land coming in towards the west, you can actually like overfly the point and then do a proper traffic pattern this way and come in that way. But I just want to do it in the quickest way possible. And the winds aren't really strong as far as I'm concerned. Actually, let's see if we can read the measure. 09006 knots. So 6 knots, which is quite significant, but who cares anyway. And it's blowing towards the east. No, sorry. It's coming towards the. Never mind. What is it? <laughs> so the proper way to take off is actually take off eastward and land eastward. But I'm just going to land westward to the heck of it because I can, and it's shorter. I don't want to spend time in the traffic pattern. It it's not necessary, and the wind is light enough. In which case, you can see from the pretty short trajectory that I flew this time that it actually is. So you're going to actually see a couple of navigation things that I was doing on this flight as we go. So, see you in the plane. Now, Phuket Air Park is actually where a plane like this, our Cessna C-172P, is going to actually take off, off in real life. Because Phuket Airport is actually bustling with airliners, and you don't want to join a queue of fast-moving airliners who's clocking on schedule which is slow little Cessna and piss off all the ATCs. There's like only one runway there so we have to chair. So let's start orbit starting and let's go fly. Right so first thing I would have to do is actually to well take off and actually this is actually have to use a short field procedure which I forgot to follow so I'll have to hit the trees and try to avoid them at the same time a little bit trees trees choose trees and I'm going to start turning north and flying along the edge of the island. I have already planned this route in my map, so I know where to go. In addition, I actually flew this route with a UFO, which is a really useful tactic if you guys are planning on doing anything of this kind. Fly your route with a UFO first, so that you know how things will work and then fly it with your normal plane like this. Actually, I have got my joystick back, but however, it seems to be really bad in terms of quality now. I just bounced around a lot, and the rudder axis is just really broken, sending the plane sideways a lot, so I can't use it anymore, and now I'm still using a mouse, which is a good thing, because you guys can still see how I'm flying. My mouse sensitivity is a little bit slower than most of you guys would be using, but uh, it's still pretty normal. And you can see that I can keep the plane in pretty much good control 
with the mouse where I would just bounce around infinite, unable to stabilize if I'm still using a stick. Even with the trim, interestingly enough, the trim is not helping in this situation because it was basically an avoidable PIO. We just fall to the left, our pull right, minimum pull right to correct it with some go barrel into the right and then a pull left and you know, you know what I mean. It's, it just absolutely unenjoyable. Oh, I'm actually supposed to level off already because in the plan it was supposed to go up to 1,000 feet. And there's Phuket Airport, you can see all to the left over there. So I should be at about 1,000 feet. So we'll just send a little bit at that mound. So at that map, so at that map, this is part of my decent planning actually. I'm supposed to be at about a thousand feet and probably at about a hundred knots, and with with flaps one on. So this is as much a quick hop as any other because this is like equivalent equivalent to a one hour airline flight, <laughs> in that you were taking off, you're cruising for like I don't know, thirty minutes, fifteen minutes, and then you start your descent. It's the kind of stuff that uh, the air hostess would start to go up and down the cabin, you guys can go to the toilet, and even if the airplane is not like at the top of its climb to its final altitude yet, because if you have to wait to the uh, final altitude before you can get to the toilet, you will be able to cram to the entire toilet for like 15 minutes or so, which is not like not good. <laughs> okay, so it's one time, I think it's time. Start descending and open flaps one, and keep her speed under 100. Oh, I think we can still rev the engine up a bit. That's all. Margins. Actually, this is good because we will have to. Oops. Frame rate gradually slow down towards. Should I? Turn up the side a little bit because we, it looks like we're shaving the hill a little bit too close this time around. Oh, no, it's going to be okay. <laughs> I measure it's going to be okay. It's not legal, but it's okay. We're not going to crash into the hill. Okay, so, the instant we pass the hill, we're going to start churning and decelerating to 80. And that's also when we really want to start descending. So let's down the engine now, so we start getting into our f uh, 500 feet per second, which I think is what I calculated this to be at. And watch your speed. Well, the engine is pretty low actually, because we have to be... No, we're faster than we are, so we're fine. We're good. Okay, I did it a little bit too quick. Did that turn a little bit too quick. Should slow down more actually. Last two. And time for the final final turn. I'm dropping way too fat quicker than I should. Okay, so I'm established. Let's see where I'm at. If I think a little bit high actually. And a little bit left. Can't feel any crosswind right now. Maybe a little bit to the left, so I correct a little bit to the right more than usual, but I can't see the windsock from I forgot to check the windsock from that point, so... Oh, I'm actually getting blown to the right this time around. Weird. Okay, we're on trajectory. So, let's flap 3 and 60 knots. Looking pretty good. Actually, let's add a little bit of engine power. We f I feel a little low on energy right now. The planes are actually taking off from the opposite side. This is what you get from flying in uncontrolled without any ATC. You just fly against everyone. You can get into a traffic pattern flying from the other side if so you desire, but that's not what they do here. Right on trajectory. This is like the most on, like the most on landing I have ever flown. Uh, only aside from like all of the lateral undulations I need to keep to make to get better at this. Lateral axis sucks right now. Okay. Stop. Got to going out the runway. And flaring. 
good. Looking pretty good. Now, we don't have to break really fast here because we will have to cruise over to like the far end of the runway in order to even get a chance to enter the taxiway. It's pretty far out. Okay, so let's ride our wheel a little bit because I want to see what's going on. Okay, I think that's our turnout at the front there. Let's add up over throttle. I think we're going too slow. And now we're good. I suck at staying on the lane. I wish it wasn't as bad when I actually get to like drive a real car. Because that would not be good. Or else it was like a crosswind and was not aware of and that was messing things up. It's possible because they're flying with like real weather and pretty strong winds when it was testing a stick, that might be the case. I'll have to like control the situation first before we get into this dip. There is a turnout. Can't read the sign, it's a little bit too far away. Probably something like E or L. So tax away. E echo is it is, and I'm going to turn over to the apron, which seems to be reserved for this kind of aircraft, the GA apron, which is within here. No, I'm going too fast now. So we also have taxiway Papa, which is the one running, like uh, parallel to the runway, and that was the one that we would use to taxi to the opposite end of the runway on ground if you need to do that this is like the most proper taxi session I've ever done <laughs> like in all DDK videos I would just park like outside the, the runway and stop at that <laughs> Okay, I'll have to slow down a bit here, because this is a pretty sharp turn, apparently. And then park myself. And if you're hearing a constant pitch sound, like, like eh, or something like that, this is actually from the plane, from the simulator, probably from the avionics. This is not from my mic. So please don't be throwing around that. Okay, we have received position, so brake, parking brake, and let's shut the whole thing down. Okay, quick shutdown check, quick and improper shutdown checklist, here we go. <laughs> okay, so I have backtracked on the flight replay to the point where we are about to overfly the hill, and actually let's see how, what kind of margins do we have when we're overflying the hill? Right now we have like 1,000 feet separation from the ground and it's dropping fast. This is probably where we're about, it's about to like drop big time. Yeah, it's dropping big time. 1,000 feet is oncoming. 1,000 feet. 950 as we're approaching the lowest parts. <laughs> 850 and yeah, 850 feet is like minimum separation on that route. It might be a little bit lower if your if your trajectory is a little if your flight path is a little bit different past that hill but as you can see there's pretty much enough margin that if you can keep your altitude it's pretty fine if you ask me so now we've made a pretty effortless turn towards the runway and let's just watch myself uh, descend toward it wait this is actually going to take a while so let's fast forward hit the a key to fast forward and shift a to you know undo the fast forward. You can even do things like half speed or quarter speed. It's really useful if you're about to like go through a very energetic crash and you want to see what it's like. <laughs> now we're back on real time. This is what it looks like. We overflew the pads, which is a rare occurrence. Landed really nose up. Hopefully we didn't tail strike and bam. <laughs> Pretty much pretty close to the center line. 
I for, actually forgot to retract the flaps on the way in, but you know, not a big deal. <laughs> oh, and, and if you don't haven't known so far, you can see it on the overlay. CT Control R opens the replay panel, so this is where you can instant replay your flight and scroll around. As you can see, scrolling back to that point, it says easy as clicking around. And sometimes you can click also click my controls in order to take over the controls, but that would up also update the state of the aircraft to what it is right now. So right now, if I hit my controls, the engine would turn off, and and probably the battery would also turn off because I turned them both off in flight. <laughs> and actually, let's see what throttle setting I use. I'm actually a bit curious. So we're on the 62%, something like that. Let's scroll over to when I was about to descend. On the final leg, I was doing something like 30%. There's all there's also a view that was from no, I turn actually turned it off. This is a view from a right seat. The paper who isn't flying the plane and was watching me fly. This is what they would be seeing. Okay, so I think that will be enough for today, guys. Now, uh, thanks for watching, Dory Kitty. I think we'll, I'll see you again next time. Possibly, most likely with Minkin, but maybe with Flight Gear. And have a nice flight.